Here's how the Miami Heat's elite role players contribute to their domination. The fourth seed in the Eastern Conference has currently won six of their last eight games, with Jimmy Butler mostly and Bam Adebayo completely out of the lineup. The second-year undrafted pro out of DePaul University in Chicago, Max Struess, has become one of the most lethal limited-minute perimeter sharpshooters across the association down in South Beach. Along with the addition of a reigning champion and top defender P.J. Tucker, locking down teams with his versatility, yet another undrafted player in Omer Yurtsevin stepping up without Bam Bam, plus the overlooked signing of Caleb Martin to a two-way contract, Pat Riley and Miami's front office have added some serious depth. With Butler day-to-day -day with an ankle injury and Adebayo expected to return near the end of January, stay tuned to see why an all-star caliber Kyle Lowry and a cast of top-notch glue guys have won 7 of 10 completely short-handed. Before continuing, only 10.4% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops and I'll follow you back. Links in the description for those two platforms. Since the beginning of last year's offseason, while this vid you're watching is only the fifth time I've posted on Miami in particular, based off the quality of wins they've been racking up, you could start to see a lot more heat videos being uploaded on this channel. It's already the second time I've talked about Miami in less than two weeks, so that further proves my point. The Heat's 21-22 success so far becomes even more intriguing when you take into account that it's a direct result of incredibly sound decision-making in the front office, with Pat Riley taking chances on low-ranked talent, which has ultimately rebooted the roster over the last few years around the cast of Jimmy Butler and Bam Bam following the 2020 Finals run. This season, Miami has multiple wins over the number one seeded Chicago Bulls, and while the Bulls were missing DeMar DeRozan and a few others in the last game these two played, Miami was without Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo, but still found a way to take down the raging Bulls 118-92, which is Chicago's last loss to this date. For the Heat's outing in Rip City on Wednesday night, Eric Spolstra gave Max Struess just his fourth start in 28 games played, opting to bring both Duncan Robinson and Tyler Hero off the bench. Both Struess and Robinson returned from health and safety, but the sniper from Hickory Hills, Illinois and Struess didn't show any signs of rust. Max poured in seven triples, which led him to post a blistering game-high 25 points to give Miami a much-needed win after they had taken back-to-back -back L's in Sacktown and the Bay Area. South Beach could have definitely used Struess in those hard-fought losses they took to the Kings and Warriors. Overall though, Max's beastly performance against Portland went to further prove his dramatic improvement from last season, which has led many skeptics to question if Max Struess should take Duncan Robinson's starting spot permanently next to Kyle Lowry and Jimmy Butler. For example, Kevin O'Connor of The Ringer recently wrote that Struess has generally been more valuable than Robinson in 21-22. Struess is shooting 41.4% on 6.23 point attempts per game. Robinson is shooting 35.2% on 8.5 attempts. However, O'Connor noted that this hot shooting from the former DePaul standout may not last. Struess shot 35% in college and 36.6% in the NBA and G League before this season. O'Connor said, This season is a positive outlier for Struess in the same way it's a negative outlier for Robinson who has shot over 40% from three since high school. But even working off the dribble himself, manufacturing some buckets individually, Struess has posted proficient numbers either pulling up for jumpers or when he's driving all the way to the restricted area where he's making 71% of his shots. Conversely, at least in 21-22, Robinson has developed a reputation of being incredibly streaky making just 33.7% of his 8.4 tries from three per game and only 56% of his shots in the restricted area, down from 40.8% and 79% respectively last season. Struess hit the go-ahead three last Thursday against Detroit, some timely shots in Rip City, and all season, quite simply, he's been much more valuable than Robinson for the Heat this year. Regardless of who's ultimately better, there's some incredible internal competition between these two wing players. Annually, Struess is making 1.7 million, while Robinson is making 15.6, million, 
and is in the first year of his five-year $90 million contract, which is going to be tough to move. As I mentioned in my last Heat video, Robinson is solid at contesting shots defensively, but there are concerns for both Struess and Robinson on that end of the court, but we're going to put that aside because in the modern NBA, you need all the shooting you can get. Struess and Robinson being on the same team in the first place is a luxury for Miami, especially with so many players out with injuries and health and safety protocols, but Duncan does need to stop posting less donuts. Meanwhile, Max Struess must continue to display to Eric Spolstra that his current flamethrowing pace isn't a fluke. As I mentioned, Miami is ravaged with injuries right now, so Struess is going to have plenty of more opportunities to prove what kind of sharpshooter he really is. Heat fans eager to see Struess take Robinson's starting spot permanently, begging to see Robinson traded, are getting way ahead of themselves. We have to wait until Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo come back to see how Struess vibes off those two consistently. Also, even though he's shooting a lower percentage from three this year, don't forget Robinson still draws defensive attention like one of the better shooters in the world. While PJ Tucker is making 46.2% on threes, defenders still leave Tucker open before leaving Robinson open just based off his reputation. Lastly on Max Struess, not only is he an absolute laser from deep range, but he can catch defenders sleeping and explode to the basket with shocking athleticism. Signifying Max's eliteness, this handshake with Jimmy Butler is truly top notch, and you can tell from that alone how close Struess has become with his Heat teammates. The guys love him. The scariest part about Miami, aside from their duo and Lowry, is that Max Struess is only one of several standout role players who can make a legitimate impact on the momentum of games. One of five Heat players in Pat Riley's depth chart who went undrafted, the Turkish phenom up front in the 23-year-old Omar Yurtsevin is proving to be one of the biggest NBA steals of the last half decade. The rookie has excellent size, mobility, and athleticism up front, he can catch and finish passes in the lane, and to top off an exceptional offensive resume, Omer has polished veteran-esque abilities in the post. Yurtsevin logged 14 points on 5 for 9 field goals, even making his first career 3-point shot, compiling 16 boards, 4 dimes, and 1 block in the win over Portland. Omer led all players in the contest in rebounds, which is entirely unsurprising given his recent play. The pride of Turkey has corralled double-digit boards in 10 straight contests and has scored enough to collect five double-doubles each in his past six games over that span. If you picked him up in fantasy, you took a massive W because the man's going off recently, resembling the ideal backup center for Spolstra once Bam Bam returns. From his poster in crunch time to seal a dramatic W against the reigning champion Milwaukee Bucks, to the fact that he put up incredible averages for a role player in December, Caleb Martin has been an absolute godsend for fans in South Beach. Filling in for Butler's scoring and defense on the wing, Caleb posted 13.3 points per game on a fiery 56.5% shooting from the field and 43.3% shooting from deep range. Considering Martin didn't get picked up until the end of free agency and it was only a two-way contract, man's a severely undervalued NBA talent on the wing. Speaking of undervalued wing talent, as you're seeing on your screen at the moment, Miami's $15 million man PJ Tucker has some of the NBA's best one-on-one -on -one clamps defensively. The reigning champ earned that ring by helping Big Bobby Portis to reverse the identity of the Milwaukee Bucks from a team thought of as one that could get pushed around in the playoffs to the toughest ball club in the association. Tucker's delivered a similar effect to Miami, not only has he been the driving factor in keeping Miami a top 10 defense without two of their best stoppers in Bam Bam and Butler, but as I mentioned before, the man's been lighting it up from beyond the arc. Over 33 games, Tucker ranks second in the NBA among all shooters in three-point percentage. Based off that, one could come to the conclusion that there's just something up in the air in Miami, because in his first season rocking heat threads, this is the most efficient P.J. Tucker has ever shot from deep range by over 6 percentage points, which is insane. In your opinion, who's Miami's most valuable role player? Best answer earns next video shoutout. The top 5 commenters with the most shoutouts by March 21st are going to receive NBA merchandise of their choosing this spring, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. I just received this Curry Flow 6 shoe, which I'll be shipping to one of my Speaks winners, Boston Holtain. 
two more awards are on the way from last December's giveaway. Today's shout out goes to Seiyi Ognubi, who says, I'm looking forward to Vucevic to go off because I feel like he's the key to the Bulls starting five having the success that it has. Not only that, I feel there aren't a lot of big men in the NBA that can guard him too well. Hope you have a great one. DFlow signing off.